When men strive to push back the frontiers of knowledge, science and dreams often come together in an extraordinary journey of the imagination. The universe we know and our immediate environment are in constant flux, and each new answer on their mechanism entails a flurry of new questions. Scientists, in fact, are never content. If we were content, I think we'd still be sitting in the trees eating bananas because I'm sure life was perfect then. I mean, there was no reason to climb out of the trees, right? Except that someone was curious and thought, wonder what it's like on the ground, and maybe I could walk on two legs instead of four. Wow, when I walk on two, I can sort of run fast and I can catch things, and uh, you know, so I think that's, that's somehow just part of being. Dr. Anja Andersen is a Danish astrophysicist working in Heidelberg, Germany. She exemplifies the scientist who juggles with seemingly impossible questions, much like a child plays with a toy. And an interview with her can feel like an encounter of the third kind. If you're out in the rain, should you then actually run through the rain, will you then get less wet than if you walk very slowly? Because if you walk slowly, you only have the rain coming down straight to you. If you run, it will also hit your front. So how will you get the least wet? and all kind of weird things like that, which makes at least my children think I'm a little bit strange, right? But, but I think that's uh, the nature of a scientist, that there's, you know, no question is too small for us to actually discuss or make a theory about. I mean, because we just we really want to find out how does things work. Yes, scientists often resemble children. They also know that a sense of humor is vital to communicate their work, and they don't hesitate to amuse themselves. Maybe one of these days we, we will start studying teleportation. Over the years, the European Space Agency has proved that space visions can be turned into reality and justify the investments that may seem expensive. When you have to send something into space, it's really hard, it's really difficult. It needs much novel technology and it needs lots of clever scientists who can think out how to make the mission happen and how to make things work. And all this technological development actually has a good spin-off of things that will be that's benefit for us on Earth. I mean, things that's going to be part of our everyday life in the future, which is only developed because we want to go to space, because space is so hard to get to that we push this technology to the limit. Harnessing international efforts like ESA does to understand the universe is no easy task. The men and women who work on the front line can take many risks. But space research and exploration also have another, less immediately visible benefit. You know, it could be maybe the big peace project, a bit like I see the European Union as the big peace project, right? I mean, with the European Union, we are so busy trying to work together that we don't have too much time to actually go to war together. And maybe space could be that, that we collaborate to get things into space. Uh, and that's going to keep us so busy that we don't have time to disagree about the little things. Far removed from the old idea of a scientist in his ivory tower, throughout her conversation, Anja Anderson inspires by intertwining the more difficult theories of her field of research with practical issues of everyday life and reflection about man's existence. There's nothing more sexy than space, right? I mean, who hasn't been standing out on a dark night and looking up to the sky at the stars, thinking how many stars are out there, how many stars have planets like Earth, and how many of these planets is there someone like me looking up, thinking about whether there's someone like me looking up. It is thought that our sun will burn itself out in some five billion years, engulfing its environment and the Earth. By then, will we have understood the universe? Not at all sure but scientists will certainly have had time to ask themselves even more intriguing questions. <laughs>